So it's harvest day today, and this is actually our first significant harvest really for autumn. We were away last weekend, and so we've only been just harvesting bits and pieces through the week. So it's a lovely harvest, I've got to say. It's probably one of the nicest harvests we've done, even though we do try and have a similar sort of harvest table all the way through the year. I'll show you a few highlights from around the allotment, and uh, then I'll show you the harvest table and just talk you through what we've got and what's coming up. So the sweet corn's coming to an end now, and so I'm clearing one bed a week. I've got three beds. And, you know, not all the sweet corn are gonna be good. Um, we've been harvesting for a few weeks now off this bed. So most of the really good ones have gone, but uh, they're still, they're not perfect, but there's still some decent um, corn on them. As we progress down here, then these are the ones that haven't been harvested yet so these are great so these are still in great condition and i've planted them in succession so i haven't harvested any of these yet and so these are all fantastic so the only issue is these rot in really if uh, they were left too long but uh, i think they're going to be okay for another week or so and obviously we don't want to pick like 50 different sweet corn uh, all in the same week so we'll spread them out a bit. But I do want to get some of them planted because I do want to start replanting this bed progressively over the next three or four weeks. So these are the last few tomatoes now. I left these on. Um, most of them have got blight. Uh, most of the plants rather have got blight and so I've removed them. And this plant's got blight as well, but the actual fruits seem fine. We've been ripening these at home and we've had great success to be honest. Um, they've ripened up beautifully at home with overripe apples as the source of ethylene gas and they seem to you know when, when apples are at the point where they're so red that they're going to go uh, rotten pretty soon that's the point at which they seem to give off huge quantities of ethylene and they seem to ripen the tomatoes really quickly so if you can find apples like that and we have a particularly good early apple tree that tastes horrible to eat, but is a great source of really ripe apples at this time of year. And so I'm pretty confident that we'll get these ripened off because there were, lots of them are showing signs now of ripening. And so I'll take them all off. And that means I can take these plants out and uh, start to get this bed replanted. I've just taken the old cucumber plants that we started harvesting in April out of the conservatory and taken the last harvest off those and so I'm kind of hoping now that I'll still have cucumbers in the polytunnel until my next batch in the conservatory are ready which will be about three weeks probably from now and I've got loads on at the moment but I can't see a lot of new ones come in so fingers crossed i'm just not spotting them anyway i'm going to get these harvested we don't have any mature cooking apple trees we've got one but it's only small at the moment and it's only giving us like a handful of um, cookers a, a year and so it's really nice when you come to the polytunnel and a uh, fellow pot holder has dropped some off for us so you might remember that uh, i took my main um, chili pepper harvest off these plants probably well at least back in August beginning of August and I just stuck them outside and gave up on them um, I didn't really expect anything else from them really but I've just got this amazing second harvest a complete second harvest so uh, I'm gonna pick these I'll get them in the freezer well, that's quite an unexpected bonus and I've got the same sort of issue with my main sweet pepper beds in that almost all the early peppers are ripened so now I'm on the second crop of peppers and that means picking some green ones because we're never going to get through all of them and we're never going to get them all ripened rather well, that's a really nice mix so I'm going to pick some spinach today this is actually the first and maybe it's the second pick of true spinach uh, since we finished with it probably I'll go back in June probably 
So in the interim, we've really only had New Zealand spinach. So uh, I'm going to pick this quite hard because it's growing quite fast now. And we've got quite a lot of spinach coming on. In particular, there's quite a bit in this bed, which should be ready by next week. This bed is all bonus in that uh, we just harvested the onions a bit earlier than expected. So it let us get this crop in and we will be replanting it all uh, come October. And actually I noticed as I was doing the spinach that's already going to seed. So when you sow spinach here in August, even direct in the ground, it's still going to go to seed pretty soon. I think it's sort of like the middle of August really that uh, is the best time to sow. And I've got some turnips here, little ones, not ready yet. Um, but we've got plenty of radishes, so I'm going to pick radishes now. I also want to plant radishes into, well, all the beds really that I can find space in. So in this case, this is a pak choy bed. This pak choy now, it needs the space. So uh, over the next two weeks, I'll take all this radish out and then I'll take it out of the tap soy bed, probably week and three. These little beauties are five weeks old. Fantastic. We don't actually uh, grow radishes in summer, so it's really nice to be harvesting these early autumn. Now as per usual I'm just going to pick some Colette leaves. I want these young ones. Not very many per plant because I've taken a lot of the lower leaves off this week. And I'm actually going to pick a few Colettes I think because these are these are fine and I do love them so much. And there's masses and masses of Colettes here so I need, need to worry about running out. Pick a few Brussels sprout tops, not tops, just the odd leaf and I'm going to pick some of these. These are the purple sprouting broccoli leaves and these are absolutely gorgeous. These are one of my favourites. So I'm going to pick a load of kales and some of these perennial kale leaves because I'm a big believer in diversity and although all of these plants are brassicas there's a massive difference in the nutritional kind of profile when you compare say cauliflower leaves, uh, Brussels sprout leaves, broccoli leaves, kale leaves, cabbage leaves, etc, etc. Loads and loads of variation in, in the nutrients that uh, those plants make available. So diversity in colour and variety and type of veg is really important. I find that the odd Brussels sprout plant kind of loses track of the season it's in and starts throwing off these loose sprouts and you know a lot of people don't seem to like loose sprouts I don't really understand why I love them and uh, I really look forward to these out of season plants now we grow all of our autumn and winter and spring carrots in the ground um, but we've got for early autumn we've got these in the containers and they're not I mean they're not too bad a carrot let me just get one out I'll show you so this isn't too bad but I just wanted to show you my test picks of this is one of my autumn early winter carrots just a random pick and let's compare it side by side there and then these are just two Again, random picks from my winter carrot beds. Now these are a bit shorter um, and they're slower growing, so they've still got plenty of life left in them. And they will probably be more like this sort of size by the time we get to winter. But uh, these are ready for eating. These are our autumns. Let's say late autumns. These are our early autumns. So not a bad little selection of carrots there, but I am so looking forward to eating these just picked the first pair off my little tree there there's a few started dropping on the floor they're not quite ready yet um, but they'll ripen off the tree um, but I'm eating it anyway because it's really crunchy and crispy uh, it's just not quite at perfection and I'm just about to pick the lettuces and this is our main lettuce bed right now the ones at home are suffering a bit. I think some of them are going to seed and some of them have got cabbage, uh, cabbage, have got lettuce root aphid which is a really annoying 
thing that just seems to happen at home in this sort of time, like late summer, early autumn. And so we're really lucky that we don't seem to have that pest on the allotment. So I'm just in the back garden right now and we're not harvesting very much from here now. So mainly this is where we harvest from in summer, but most of the summer stuff has been replanted now. And most of these kales and things like that are really for late autumn, winter and spring. And we've just got the grapes still to harvest, a few carrots and the beans, a bit of spinach. And then everything else, as I say, is for later on in the year apart from the beans and I think when I did this last harvest video I thought the beans had finished uh, all the leaves were dying back like this we'd had really cold weather you know down to uh, I think six or seven degrees centigrade really high winds just not bean weather at all but now they've just put on loads of new growth and we're getting a really nice big harvest off them again so I'm kind of confident that these will keep us going until October, again, weather dependent. And then here's the lettuce that's got um, root aphid, and you can see it just doesn't look good. And it's really not been harvested for a week. It's put on no growth. There's a few going to seed, whatever. So it's a good job we've got the ones on the allotment. And then the fruit is pretty much finished so we really are transitioning back now harvest wise to the allotment for autumn so here's our cooked veg harvest table and quantities are definitely picking up now and that's really nice you know we try not to grow too much in summer so that we get a nice steady harvest like this all the way through autumn winter and spring and obviously the mix of veg changes over the seasons but the quantity is fairly stable so let me just talk you through what we've got here so we've got some potatoes and we harvest about two of these tubs a week between now and may and we've got some french beans and runner beans few tomatoes and those peppers that I picked carrots I don't know, a couple of apples and these are those green tomatoes and we've ripened up a huge number of tomatoes over the last two weeks that we picked because of the blight two weeks ago and that's been a great success actually ripening them in the way that we did uh, here's a few of them but most of them went to make passata. We've made a really big batch of passata this week and the quality was fantastic. I think the um, ripening off the vine, we were able to really get the tomatoes really deep red and uh, they just made a lovely uh, sauce. Got the first red cabbage of the season and those sprouts and collets. New Zealand spinach and then these are the peppers that I was picking and they're sort of scattered all over the table here and some onions and garlic and some beetroots loads of courgettes cooking apples etc the mightiest trombuccino that we've ever grown and some nice curly ones as well and sweet corn good ones and uh, not so good ones but still perfectly edible first test pick of the parsnips that one was off the allotment a bit more carrot root fly on the allotment and that one was from the back garden both of them really acceptable though decent length and we've got true spinach at the back there and all the different brassica leaves that I was talking about so sprouts, collets, perennial kale, carvalho nero, curly kale, pentland brig I think that's most of them there 
and then we've got some celery and some leeks so I love these harvest tables this is just a standard weekly harvest the kind of bulk harvests I don't show in these videos you know this is just what we eat in a week friends and family and uh, we'll have another table next in up on the video which will be all their uh, salads so I'll show you what's happening in the store in another video properly but I've just started processing the onions and I'm guessing that this is about a third of them something like that okay so here's the salad table so we've got a few tomatoes I think we've only got one more harvest of tomatoes now until the late crop are ready and then we've got cucumbers salad onions a radish mixed salad leaves uh, some more cucumbers there and more salad leaves so quite a nice selection again on the salad table so I hope you like this quick harvest video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.